more! Here are 20 fun facts about Wes Chan Best Man. Oh, what? Oh, oh, Alright, let's peel some potatoes. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh yeah. Oh my god. Your head looks different today. Different than the lock that I have. If you ever go eat with Wes, you'll notice that he always orders last. Wes always asks what you're ordering first. Every time without fail. I've traveled with Wes for years now, for over a decade, eating with him at so many places, so many fast food joints, fancy joints. He always waits to see what everyone else orders and then he'll place his order. I think it's more strategic. So he tries to see if you're getting one of the things that he's thinking of getting, cause then he'll get something else and then just share with you. So according to the Myers-Briggs personality test, uh, Wes is currently an INFJ. He used to be an INTJ, so he used to be an architect, but now is an advocate, whatever that means. He switched from a T to an F, meaning he feels more than he thinks now. So I think Wang Fu is finally having an effect on Wes, so he's starting to feel the feels. Wes loves listening to movie soundtracks. He listens to it in the car while he's driving. He listens to it in the office when everyone else is listening to it. And it's always the same soundtrack. Super epic fighting battle kind of soundtracks. So it's either Oblivion, Star Wars, Jurassic Park, and Tron, Tron Legacy to be exact. I think the reason is because it's an escapism. I think he likes whatever he's doing, he wants it to be in a movie. He wants to imagine <laughs> writing emails on a light cycle. When he's driving his car, he wants to be on Alderaan. But sometimes in the office, he'll play um, not as intense music. So it'll be like a Disney binge or like a Miyazaki binge or Hedwig's theme. The office always feels really magical when Wes's music is playing. If you follow Wes on Instagram, his feed, a lot of times you'll see photos of him. Like besides the nature ones, he usually looks like he's probably a guy from a sci-fi movie. That's because he's an avid fan of sci-fi movies. Sometimes he comes into the office and I'm like, dude, you look like an astronaut. Or a robot. Like, I think if he had a choice, he could just cosplay every day as Iron Man with a little bit of like cloud in there. And he, it's kind of already happening. Wes is a collector of many things. Like he likes cardboard, boxes, bottles, and chairs. And you're not allowed to sit on them. He has specific chairs for specific reasons. And apparently he started collecting styrofoam. What? We all know that Wes loves his monochromatic colors black, white, and gray. He also loves green. Green veggies. Green onions, green milk tea, green eggs and ham. He was gonna call his company Base Green, but I think there was a typo and he just went with gray instead. Wes hates fluorescent lighting. He thinks it feels like you're sitting in a bathroom. So oftentimes we have all the lights off here and we always have lamps on. Also, Wes doesn't like being backlit or sitting with his back towards windows. Maybe it's because he doesn't like silhouettes or he doesn't like hot back, but that doesn't make sense because he's constantly wearing active gear, which is like dry fit. So even if he had back sweat, dude, it would just dry. I don't know if he knows that I know, but every time before we film something, Wes checks himself out on photo booth. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. No one uses photo booth anymore except for him. But yeah, he will like turn it on and I see him doing like a little hair swoop. And if there's no computer nearby, he'll use the TV reflection or any reflection. I see you. Wes is the best Instagram boyfriend. He's one of those guys that like is always looking for like the best backdrop for photos and stuff. So we'll just be walking around and if he sees something, he'll just grab whoever's around to be a model and he'll place you there. He'll set you up and he'll frame you and he'll take your photo and then he'll send it and then he'll color it and he'll make you look good. He hasn't done it for me yet, but um, I'm, I'm still waiting. In addition to that fact, when he does finally order, if there is a fish sandwich, 9.9 .9 times out of 10, he will get the fish sandwich. I guarantee you, he loves fish sandwiches. If we're at a fast food restaurant, he'll always get the fish sandwich. He thinks it's healthier. He loves steamed fish, broiled fish, fried fish, fish filet, lemon fish, pepper fish, cuttlefish. <laughs> Wes is very environmentally conscious. He reuses water bottles all the time, but he doesn't reuse the cap. Wes, put the cap back on the water bottle. It's gonna fall, it's gonna spill on everything. Where's the cap, Wes? He also keeps an emergency water bottle in his car, but that one has the cap on it. Where's the cap 
for the one in the office, Wes. What if there's an earthquake and your bottle falls over? He has a large collection of postmodernism and modern uh, design and architectural books. More personal shorts, you know, carried some of that aesthetic and feel and texture, specifically the One Days series, uh, the ones that were shot in Hong Kong, and like When Five Fell, somewhere like this, even Everything Before Us. We recently went to Taiwan for like a friend's trip and Wes and I went to go get our eyes tested and he found out that he has really bad astigmatism for a while. Like he had no idea he had astigmatism. And I was like, did you not notice that things are blurry and kind of hazy and glowy? And he's like, what? That's not what the world normally looks like? I'm like, no, that's not. <laughs> and I guess it makes sense because his shorts are so lovely and pretty. It's because he has astigmatism. That's how he sees the world. Wes loves foreground elements. I love foreground elements too. If you don't know what foreground elements are, an example would be like a plant or a blurry. See that? That's a foreground element. That's actually just Chris's hand. Wes will always try to find an object on set to kind of put in front of camera to just give it a little blur and a little bit of character. And it actually pays off a lot. It makes the frame look a, little, a lot more cinematic. You'll always know it's a signature Wes shot if you see a little blurry thing in the corner of the frame. Wes can fall asleep like that. He might be borderline like clinically narcoleptic, honestly. When there's downtime in between takes or like we're just like chilling, if you turn around, he'll be knocked out. Like when did that happen? And the funny thing is like he, he can just sleep like with his hands in his pockets like at the foot of the bed, still almost like sitting, but then just like, like lean back. And he could literally stay like that until the next morning. Maybe he does it because he's up all night making things. I don't know. What are you doing? Are you a vampire? He sleeps a lot and hard. But they might forget to mention that Wes also sleeps with his eyes open. So it's really crazy because you can't tell if he's sleeping or not and you don't know if you like can disturb him or not. So you kind of just creep under his eyes just to kind of make sure. And I think he's caught me doing it once. It was so scary. <laughs> So I've known Wes for five years now, and it's really been an honor to watch him work because, I mean, you guys see his work, it's amazing. And when you actually get to see him work behind the scenes, you get to see all the thought and consideration and dedication that he puts into every aspect of his art. And the one thing that I always respect and admire about Wes is his drive to always be better. And he's just one of the most humble people that I know. And I really am so proud how to call him my brother. So Wes is a very introspective person. He's very thoughtful. At the same time, he's very passionate. And uh, because of his introspection, you start to inject very personal experiences, very personal uh, tastes into whatever it is that you're creating. It teaches us uh, as creative people to never lose your voice, whether it's storytelling or whether it's design. It is one of the things that makes all of us stand out as a human being. Wes is extremely supportive. Whenever, you know, I'm kind of going through a stressful time at work or anything, he's always the first to ask, how can I help? And he's always so eager to put himself in your shoes to understand how you're feeling, where you're coming from, and then also trying to figure out on his end what he can do to help you to make things better. And I think as a teammate and as a manager and a boss, that's an extremely amazing quality to have. When I first met Wes back in like 2004, I actually just thought that he just like looked really cool and made really cool stuff. And I just wanted to make stuff with him. I don't think either of us really realized what we were about to embark on. I don't think any of us could have guessed what we would have accomplished together with Ted. And now he's become like a brother, you know, like we've spent so much time together, um, had so many ups and downs, and there's really no one else that I would have wanted to do this with, or I don't think I could have done this with than Wes. Um, he's, he's honestly brought so much to Wong Fu Productions and I'm extremely grateful. <gasps> Bonus facts! Whenever he goes to get milk tea, he always has to get green milk tea, half sugar, light ice, no boba. The reason why he does like light ice is because he thinks that once it melts, it will dilute the remaining milk tea. So it has the perfect level of sweetness. Wes is the living embodiment of Nike. Nike Lab to be specific. If you just look up Nike Lab on Instagram, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. That feed is the exact same feed as Wes's feed. I should just call him Nike. Nike Chan. Wes used to own a pickup truck. A lot of you guys, I think, see his car now and it's like really cool, but he used to have just like a, a beat up classic 
Toyota pickup truck. There wasn't even a name for it. That's how old it was. It was just called Toyota pickup. And he was really proud of it. It was like stick shift, had roll down windows, no AC, cramming me, Wes and Ted into like the front seat because there was no back seat. And it was like kind of rickety, almost like driving a tractor. <laughs> Contrary to popular belief, Wes is not related to Taylor Chan or Jackie Chan or Hitman Chan, but he is related to Brian Chan, who's his older brother. It's Wesley and Brian. Those are the same names of my older brothers, Wesley and Brian. So I just need to meet his brother, and then I can have two sets of Wesley's and Brian's to be my older brothers. Wes never loses things, he just can't find them. Something that he often can't find is his keys, because as you guys know, he's a minimalist, so his keychain is also extremely minimal too. There have been many times where he's had to borrow the spare or we've had to let him in. <laughs> so there are two food stealers in the office. One is Philip, the other is Wesley. So Phil is the one who would kind of just outwardly take it, no shame. But Wes is kind of more subtle. He'll like have wandering eyes. He's kind of like a meerkat. He's like... So that's when you know it's your cue to be like, do you want some Wes? But he'll kind of play it off and be like, oh, let's let's trade food. So it doesn't seem as bad, but yeah, he's a food stealer. Do I look do I look okay? Because I, I, I didn't get a chance to, to check on Photo Booth earlier. That was really, really touching actually. And I, I wish I could respond to every single comment there because it's uh, it's really flattering and it's it's all true, you know? Like the, the reason I listen to that stuff is because I, I want to be in the movie. Taylor is exactly right. This was actually just an introduction to everyone in the office. If you want to know more fun facts, be sure to subscribe to more Wang Fu. There's a lot that happens there, even more on social, on the daily. So keep up with us there and we'll see you next time.